I've been making the most I can pretty much so far of my day off. Um, I spent the morning, I've done my three trips to the leasing office today, okay? And it's kind of ridiculous that it's like absurd, but whatever. So, when the first time to check on like, what's the process if we do break the lease because potentially moving stuff? And they gave me that information, they're like, maybe with separation stuff, it'll count still. But we'll have to look at the stuff. So I brought the papers back. They're like, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. So now I have, this is what your other options are. And then, so then I left again. Went to go do some of my other errands, like looking for a bigger crochet hook because I'm trying to do the whole crochet thing and it's coming out too tight and the book that I got from Walmart was like, if you have some hard troubles with it at first, try doing the first row with like a slightly bigger hook so that you can make sure it's loose enough. Um, so I went to Joann's up the street and did that and found a, another yarn that's actually made for crochet that's actually a little bit, um, not quite as soft. Um, so wondering if maybe that'll also help with trying out initially when it's, you know, got a little bit more shape to it, shall I say. Um, maybe that'll be easier to keep track of, like, where the front loops versus the back ridge are that I'm supposed to be using and everything. Um, as well as getting a chain that I can hopefully use to replace the one that was broken on my Ravenclaw necklace that I love so much and have not been able to wear in forever because the chain was awkwardly short to the point where it rested like right here. So when I'm wearing regular t-shirts I have a bad habit of the neckline being right here. It's uncomfortable for me so all too often I spend the day like doing this number. and. One day I did that, grabbed the necklace at the same time on mistake because I still had it on after I had gotten home from work and just yanked the shirt down off my neck and just broke the necklace. But it's like super teeny teeny tiny chains so um, the extension I tried to find at Walmart was way too big for it and so I was able to find a chain that is hopefully comparable uh, that I can use instead. Just a matter of figuring out how to go about it. Um, hopefully. I can use like the pliers and do like I've done with the earrings and fix it because unfortunately it's like handmade crap from Etsy so I can't just easily like replace it or get it fixed at least not by bringing it unless I bring it to like somewhere that's specifically for that oh, um, I don't know how much that would cost Hopefully I can just do this and fix it myself. We'll see. I'm trying to experiment and be more like creative and crap, okay? But anyway, um, I need to eat lunch now because I also, <laughs> uh, in more exciting things of the day, um, after I went to Joann's, I went and decided to, first I went by Kroger to try and check and see if the everyday movie was in Redbox because I missed it when it was in the theaters, unfortunately, because I waited too long to check and see when it actually came out, and by that point it had already pretty much left all of the theaters. Um, but unfortunately it's still either in limbo or just isn't popular enough that it's getting put in Redbox because I didn't see it anywhere. Um, so then I decided to go check out the antique mall over in Byron, the big peach shops. And it's so strange because I've been like looking at this huge peach every time I go like to and from Atlanta and every time I go to work and come back. And last time I was coming home either from work or from Atlanta when I was again the typewriter that I was um, so close to getting a myriad of last time I was up there like a week and a half ago-ish. Um, I noticed a sign saying that it was right down the next exit from here so I was like I should check that out and maybe I'll have one closer by because I was like so on the edge but I was like I don't quite have $90 for this one even though it's like so pretty and works so well and it was like one of those where I was just like 
one, just intimidated by the sheer factor of I, there's a typewriter that I love that works sitting right in front of me and it's not like crazy expensive like I've been thinking all these years of like a thousand dollars or something like that, like hundreds and hundreds of dollars and like I have the ability to get it and I was just like, oh crap, I don't know if I'm actually ready for this. <laughs> like I've been wanting a typewriter like for years, like 15, 20 years, it's been, like, been this thing in the back of my mind where it's like, I want one for no reason whatsoever. At least not like any like legit full on reason, just you know, I'm obsessed with them and for a time it was something where I was like, when I was running where it was super bad, I really wanted one and I still just like, I would love to have it just like on occasion to do stuff. Um, half for decoration, half for like recreational use, but not really like trying to write a freaking novel or something on it. Anyway, so like when I was looking into getting it, like I, was, I don't know what it was, but like it just, it felt so heavy. Like I was scared to like pick it up. I was scared to move it. And I was just like, I don't know if I can take this home with me. Like I was just freaking out. And then I went by the big peach shops today, looked around for a while, and only found one at first that was like an 80s-ish sort of one where it had like keyboard keys on it, I'm like, uh. Looked around a while again, was kind of like losing hope that maybe I would even find a second typewriter at all, and managed to find two other ones in one little booth area, um, and one was another like 80s whatever style-ish one with keyboard keys. And then one was super old style Underwood that had the glass keys, but it looks kind of worn out and it looked kind of like it may be broken. Um, and it was hard to really test it because it was in a really awkward spot and it was like stuck next to things so that the thing wouldn't move even if it did work. So, but it, it didn't look like it was in good shape. Um, and then I walked around for a while again, and again, and then I finally found another one that was almost identical to the one that I found in Marietta, uh, which is a royal, and this one actually matched one that I was looking at online when I was looking at, like, videos of them to see, like, you know, how to test it out, which different ones would work, like, what the quiet ones were, and, like, whether that, like, the silent ones, like, how much noise it actually made because that's a key part it has to make the noise otherwise it's useless as a typewriter to me I'm sorry and so and there was one I was looking at online on YouTube that had a black setting and a red setting for the font I'm like oh my god that would be amazing that would be so cool to have like two different colors you could type with like that got super excited about the potential of if I about that one but I was like eh, probably never find that one but the one that I found today is one of those it's a royal just like the one in Marietta and it has black and red ink and it was only $60 and it was actually like working there's a couple of keys that stick slightly but um barely and then it still kind of had a little bit of like ink on it like it was actually kind of typing faintly because it's about to die but it was working and I got super excited and I was like oh my god can I get it cuz uh. so yeah I have officially made my entire day and more so because I decided to go ahead and get it so it is right over here. I have me a typewriter. That's sticky key. Or not. I forgot about that. The ribbon is uh, torn off on one side. It's, oh, so, this the only thing is that the ribbon kind of has like broken off here so I had to tuck it in here so the cats wouldn't play with it while I'm between using it and everything but to close this it feels out of the way it's like totally legit and you can see where people have like written on it and it's super faint but it's legit so 
pretty excited by this. If I can open the thing. It's easier to be gentler when I have both hands. Um, but yeah, the label said it was like from 1948. And it has the glass keys and everything. Like, oh my god. And there's the little black and red ribbon. So, I'm pretty excited. <laughs> anyway, I need to eat and like research apartments. Um, and it asked me if I might even stop by them over at Macon after lunch. So I need to get to work on this. Um, but yeah, I was just super, super excited about the whole typewriter thing and being so productive today that I had to like take advantage of the time. But yeah, I gotta get to it. Um, and maybe update later, maybe with some like tours and stuff. Location. Um, that's really great when it's raining. Yeah, I've got that now, and it's very convenient. Yeah. I used to have to cross the entire neighborhood. Uh -huh. So, um, this is going to be the Crystal C2. So, um, in yours, you'll still get this room in here with the built in desk. So, you can put a computer. We've got hookups underneath if you want to put a computer in there or a router or anything. Um, this will be the size of your kitchen. We've got the dark appliances, dark cabinets, plenty of countertop space and ca um, cabinet space. Um, everything in here is energy efficient as well. So, um, you know, you're not going to, your light bill will stay a little bit lower. Right yeah. now. So, this is a great room too. So, as you can tell, it's huge in here. Um, yeah. You've got cable hookups on either side of the wall. So, and then you still get this little bit of patio space too. So. Yeah, this is about similar to what we've got currently because we have a sunroom set up. Yeah. So, I mean, not a whole lot of space, but you've got the pool up there too if you want to be outside. And still set a little chair up out here or something. This is the laundry room. Oh, yeah. So, oh. you'll like that one better, huh? <laughs> and shelves. Yeah, you got shows. the extra shelves. Yes. I always tell people you can use that as a pantry if you want it or even just while you're putting clothes up. But this will be where your bathroom will be in, that, um, in the B2, but it's going to be a lot larger than this. You'll get a garden tub and you'll also get a double vanity sink. So it's really big. Um, but this will be like where your first bedroom is. And you've got the walk-in closet in there too. This is the master. So, um, and to me, in the in the B two, the one we're looking at for you, it feel this room feels a little bit larger than even this one. So, like um, the back bedroom just is a little bit larger than this, I think, even. But they're all made to fit a king size bed with two nightstands. These are queen size in here, but as you can tell, there's plenty of room on either side. Yeah, this setup is a bit better because right mm -hmm. now, like the door opens mm -hmm. on that corner, and mm -hmm. then like the table that we have. Like, there's literally just tables and bed, and oh, there's goodness. no... <laughs> yeah, I know. You've got plenty of room in here, and then, yeah. too, you get the walk-in closet in here, too, so... And, to check out this bathtub in here, because um, that's the garden tub I was telling you about that you'll have in yours. Um, and your vanity will be a little bit longer than that one is in there because you're getting the double sink. So it'll be a little bit more like this setup for the other bathroom. It'll be a little bit more like that setup, but it's even going to be larger than that bathroom. So um, you have plenty of room in there. Um, yeah. What do you think? It's a lot more space. 